looking at some more of her artwork, and then we're going to talk about our project. We're also going to watch one more video related a little bit to Pocahontas. Nell, can you guys take it easy back there? Okay, we're on camera. Yes. Okay. okay, so these are also billboards, but these aren't animated. And I wanted to talk about the experience of boarding school and the connection to missing and murdered. So during this time, um, there's been about, I'd say about four generations at least, of Native people here in the United States who've gone through the boarding school experience. And recently, they, they made an announcement um, and a finding of like 500 bodies okay. um, so far. But there's at least there's at least you know I'd say in the millions um, of young people. Not yeah. Yeah. Um, and even the number of boarding schools like they they don't even really know because they've lost records. Records have been burned. Um, you know this is a part of history that you know people don't want to talk about, but. You know, to us, it's very real because what's left with us is the historical trauma. And so, for me, when I first started learning about like my family's history, you know, trauma and why there was a lot of issues like broken families and alcoholism and addiction, you know, uh, it led me to boarding schools. It led me to that experience and um, things that are passed down intergenerationally. So, I want to always honor our elders that went to boarding schools, the survivors and also you know, making that connection between the two. Uh, again, there's the symbol, the buffalo symbol for protection, and then this concept or this idea of the Red Arrow Society. And I'd like to do more like photographs and just more art around this hashtag, which is a women's warrior society. And you know, making those come back, you know, like for us you know, who identify um, you know, as women or wound carriers or you know, life givers, whatever, you know, whatever it is that we saw societally, it was never, you have to fit in this men's society or this woman's society. They were just gender based because there was just different abilities that each, um, each side had. And we also had two spirit societies as well. Um, and they were really non binary people or people that went in between male and female roles. And so we didn't have like this colonized view of gender. Um, I think that a lot of us are trying to fight against right now um, as far as identity. So um, a lot of our Two-Spirit relatives actually took care of um, orphans. So that was their job is they would take care of the kids that didn't have parents. Maybe their parents had passed away or maybe something else had happened. And you know, they were really sacred people. So that's something like for me too, you know, growing up I actually identified as male. And my dad supported that um, with me. So I, I, like, I looked male, I wore male clothes, um, I played hockey, um, and a lot of times people did confuse me for, you know, for a boy, and I didn't mind because to me, I felt like I, there was a lot of things from my past life or the life before, before that I didn't have in this lifetime. And I feel like now that I have you know, my children, I've come more into like being female, but also I still like, I definitely still have a lot of more male friends. I've always had a lot of male friends. Um, a lot of my creators around me are male, and we're very like, not, you know, we're very just like kind of brotherly, I guess you could say. So, um, and it's not to say that I'm not feminine, because I'm definitely feminine too, but it's just finding that balance and finding, you know, the, the ability to be more fluid, you know, with my gender. So. Um, I think you're really in a good position now that you can explore your gender any way you'd like. And I think that's, that's, that's really freeing and that's going to help you because you won't have to deal with it in the future, you know, as you're an adult. So, yep, seventh generation, that's your generation. Um, and then we'll continue on with missing and murdered. I do want to say, can I ask if you put your devices away? This is going to be a little bit of the challenge with our project. We'll do our launch, Mr. Schmitz and I start the class, and then you'll be on your device. But this is a chance for us to listen and learn from Missy's work, so your devices don't need to be on right now. You'll get to be on it, though, during class, the next four or five classes, working on your project a lot. So I know it's exciting, especially some of the things that Missy's bringing for us to look at. 
So um, we're, we're gonna have to figure out how to go like on and off them. I was showing Missy, we were talking about your social message posters a minute ago, and I feel like this video is Missy's social message video. What are the messages that she wants to bring forward through her art? That was just our last assignment, you all making those posters to show to an audience about things that you're passionate about. So let's check this out. It has a lot to do with the Pocahontas stuff that she was just talking about, missing and murdered indigenous women and children. I like this video too and her work because it's all local and so I recognize a lot of places. Levi, I feel like it's just too crowded back there. Me? Yeah, just way too crowded. Ronnie, give everybody space. Remember, it's social distancing, people. We see you, sister, a spirit filled with grace and beauty, shining bright like summer sunsets. We see you, loved ones searching for your lost family members, families holding on to hope, waiting for their return. We see you, the invisible leaders who carry on the work in silence. Your compassion and humility an example to us all, we see you community united, standing together, searching for our missing relatives and holding up the victims to the light of healing. We see you, the youngest ones who go missing in the system or stolen in the night, our babies, our children, and our future generations. We see you, our two spirit relatives, fighting to be acknowledged in this moment and in this world, remembering your role as sacred human beings. We see the boys and men who stand alongside the woman in solidarity Brother, this is our movement just as much as yours. We see you, we honor you, we love you. Her job was to go into the prison systems and to teach art. So my dad was a part of that as well. So they went into women's and men's prisons and taught art to the inmates. Uh, the work continues today with youth that are incarcerated as well, but there's a component of um, restorative practice and restorative circle work within these realms or within these institutions. So it's something that's not included in the prison system is um, uh, repatriation, or not repatriation, repatriation, but restorative practice work and restorative justice. Okay. <laughs> All right, so.
for the last 10 minutes or so of class. We've got two things. One of them is to talk about our film project. And then another one is to look at some questions that you wrote for Missy. Okay? So maybe um, I'll pull this, yeah, A5 here. Okay. I'll let you look at it for a second. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the roles, too, in filmmaking. It's exciting. So some of you have talked to me. Um, let's just go like this. So you see anything over here? Okay. Some of you have talked to me about wanting to do this in a group, right? And Missy does all kinds of group projects. In some cases, she's filmmaker. In some cases, she's director. I'm going to have her talk about that. And what would be a good way to set up a group project? Because it's not as easy as it sounds. It may sound like less work, but it also could be more work. Okay. So one thing to think about, what are her roles? In our worksheets, the third question was, what are some of the roles that Missy has in her work? And then thinking about your projects, what would you say, Missy? Well, um, oh, I to well, I would say that my role um, is really like, if you want to look at labels, you say writer, director, producer which means I do a lot of the writing, I do a lot of the directing and the producing, which means you get together the crew, you get together you know, the funding um, and resources to make a production happen. But also on top of that, I'm really number one an artist. I always say I'm an artist, so I have to be more fluid with these roles, meaning um, if I'm a director and I'm working with somebody who may be a DP, director of photography or cameraman or camera woman or camera human being, I have to make sure that I give them leadership opportunities as well, because they more they know more about their craft than I do, and that's why you know I'm working with them. Um, so a lot of those roles do shift around. So in your group, um, when you are you know coming together, think about like what's my strength? What is my strength? What am I good at? I like to draw, so I'm on a storyboard, or this is how I want to script is through my drawing. Um, I'm also a great writer, so I want to script that way. Um, also, if you're good, if you already have, you know, video, you know, if you have TikToks, if you have Snapchat, or if you have your own YouTube channel, like you already have experience in front of the camera and using the camera. So I'd say go ahead and, and move forward with that. Um, the other thing is like thinking about like how, di how deep do I want to dig into my project? How do I want, what do I want to share? Like how much information do I want to share about myself? How personal do I want to get? So if you think about <clears throat> your project's going to be screening at the Parkway and some of your friends might see it or, you know, other people. So you might not want to get too personal, but if you do, like I think that's great too. Um, I feel like the more I know about you, the more that you express yourself, the, the more I understand and I, I feel like the more adults will understand you too, you know, through your work. So that's why video is really important to me is because I feel like I help people to understand, you know, my people and my perspective and it helps, I think, overall, you know, people's lives. Like I hope it changes people's lives. Um, so again, that's why it's all within one, there's so many things that I do, but this is just the world we live in where we have to wear multiple hats. So, you see the A5 questions are behind you. If kids have questions too, you can raise your hand. Here's how it'll go a little bit moving into the next classes. Do you remember last class, Levi, we watched that video of those kids in Alaska, and they were all saying, I'm from fish eggs, right? They're from dirty grass. But then they also used a lot of their tribal names. They talked about different uh, traditions that they had. They talked about different feelings that they had, right? or ways that people talk to them. We're gonna be doing something similar to start finishing some of these I am from statements and thinking about ourselves specifically. Hopefully those statements will get you started to think about different um, scenes for your film or different photos you wanna use for your film. We don't really wanna dictate a lot about your film other than it should have something to do with who you are or who, who you are as a group, right? And we can't have them be super long either. The one that you hand in for class. We're watching about 400 of these. We're gonna go about a minute and a half. That'll mean that more kids get to have their film screened at the parkway. So we'll talk about this next class. There'll be classes where we're just taking production, photos and videos inside and outside. And then we'll also be talking about editing.
So this is coming up now. You'll need your device every time we have class. Charged, ready to go. Okay. You can ask her if she wants help reading the questions. Oh, do you want to pick questions? Do you want to pick questions? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and pick, pick one that, you, that maybe has a drawing on it. You see, what's your question? Drawing on it? Yeah. Like, are there... I see question fell out. Go ahead and look here. Uh, how do you make 3D drums? Oh, you know, Darren is my partner, my production partner, and he is the expert. I wish I had a picture. I'll have to put a picture of Darren up next time I see you all so you can see Darren. But um, I've worked with Darren since two, uh, 2008 with our first um, youth media training in uh, Lactifondle, Wisconsin together. And wow, that's... That's, that's crazy and really like awesome too. Um, but yeah, he, he and I just worked intuitively and that's really important. How many of you know what intuitively means or intuition, right? It's like when you say something at the same time as somebody else or you just feel super in sync with someone, like that's like intuitive. And to me that's really important that I work with people in that way and that way you don't really have to tell them what to do and you just kind of work collaboratively together and there's just more harmony and more, um, you know, what's the word? Like more tandemness, tandemness, like a tandem bike, right? To a bicycle built for two. Yeah. Yeah, momentum's another way to put it.